Welcome, everyone. My name is Xiomara Rodriguez, and I'm the Communications Director for Discover Puerto Rico. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule to join us for this research webinar, Puerto Rico's Competitive Position. Today, Discover Puerto Rico, along with our partners, will share information about the latest research driving our marketing strategies, evaluating the organization's past performance, and how this stacks up to the competition. Before we get started, I want to go over a few housekeeping items. Today's uh, webinar will be translated simultaneously into Spanish. Also, today's presentations are available in Spanish on our industry portal, puertoricodmo.com, so you can download the slides and follow along. La presentación del día de hoy tendrá subtítulos o closed captions en español. Si usted desea activar la función de subtítulos en español, oprima el botón etiquetado Closed Caption en la parte de abajo de su pantalla. Elija la opción que dice Show Subtitles para ver los subtítulos en español. Si desea ver el tracto completo de la traducción, puede seleccionar la función que dice View Full Transcript. La presentación que utilizaremos el día de hoy está disponible en español y puede ser descargada desde nuestro portal de la industria, puertorricodmo.com. After the presentation, we will have time to answer questions, but feel free to send your questions as we go by using the Q&A feature, which is the bubble labeled Q&A at the bottom of your screen. During today's research webinar, we will discuss great information, share insightful research, and go over the destinations plan as we prepare to reopen. You'll hear from uh, Alicia Valentine, Discover Puerto Rico's Director of Research and Analytics, Andrea Hurston, Research Analyst at Strategic Marketing and Research Insights, Vivian Murr, Senior Director of Leisure Markets at Adara. Now to get things started, I'll leave you with Discover Puerto Rico's Director of Research and Analytics, Alicia Valentine. Thank you, Ziamara. Before we jump into the data our partners are going to share, I'd like to review what we're seeing in terms of forecast and our competitive position when it comes to reopening. As I shared in last week's industry update, Puerto Rico is seeing a sharper increase in demand than the rest of the US. Of course, much of this is because our occupancy fell faster and more severely than the rest of the US without a drive market, as well as early and stringent stay-at-home measures. But this past week's data indicates lodging demand could increase more sharply. The 10-point increase in demand last week was bigger than any weekly increase across the rest of the U.S. And that followed a six-point increase the previous week. In the past month, we've seen hotel occupancy climb 26 points. The rest of the U.S. has not seen this kind of overwhelming shift. Since bottoming out at the end of March, the rest of the U.S. has seen occupancy grow 24% but it's taken three months to see the same kind of growth Puerto Rico saw in just four weeks. Though the island never officially closed to tourists, we know much of these recent gains are from residents traveling within the island, but we're seeing good weekly pickups in hotel bookings for July 15th and beyond, which we'll look at in just a moment. But in the last research webinar, Adam Sachs of Tourism Economics shared anticipated losses the industry would see through the end of 2021. Well, they've made some updates to those estimates in the last two and a half months, and their current forecast has lasting impacts on hotel demand through December 2022. As we just reviewed, Puerto Rico's situation has been quite different than the rest of the U.S. While the average hotel demand loss was 69% and 57% in April and May, Puerto Rico's decline was far more severe, with occupancy falling 94 and 91% during those same months. Of course, the goal at Discover Puerto Rico is to mitigate those losses and see the island recover faster than the world's top tourism economist estimates. But occupancy is just one piece of the picture to recovery. We've also heard from Adam Sachs in the past that the after the economic crisis of 2008, occupancy took three years to recover, but it was an additional 18 months for revenue to recover because the average daily rate had fallen so dramatically. We are seeing the same kind of behavior from other destinations. They slashed rates, but we know this isn't why consumers weren't traveling. 
there was no discount that was going to get them to travel in those early months of the pandemic. With that, it's encouraging that when other destinations were cutting rates by 40% or more, Puerto Rico properties that were booking had less severe cuts, holding at about 28% lower rates than the previous year. So where does this leave us? Well, Tourism Economics estimated 2020 demand to be down 11% when he presented to this group in April. That has been revised to 13.6% in their latest forecast. And the estimate doesn't have hotel demand back into 2019 levels until 2023. With the rate cuts, hotel revenue won't rise to those 2019 levels until the following year. But again, this is the forecast for the US as a whole. Puerto Rico is certainly very different and with a different set of circumstances. But we do have some competitors against which we can compare ourselves. Discover Puerto Rico evaluates what is happening to future bookings weekly from the Travel Click platform Demand360. This shows us how bookings compare to the same time last year. Here we see that Puerto Rico's bookings through the rest of 2022, 2020 are off about 43% from where they were a year ago. This is very much in line with the, what the competitors are seeing, with Aruba performing slightly better and Miami slightly worse. The Bahamas is an outlier, but Hurricane Dorian hit the island in September 2019, so they have a, multiple events impacting their bookings. Of course, so much is dependent on what's happening with COVID cases on the mainland, but as of now, fall looks to have better performance. And you'll notice that October is actually booking ahead of where it was a year ago. And Puerto Rico is the only destination of this competitive to set to see any positive pickup over the previous year. So what do things look like in the short term? Rather than looking at year over year performance, this is a look at week over week evaluation of bookings you'll see that Puerto Rico is booking considerably faster than throughout the rest of the summer than competitors. And the weekly pickup is about three times faster than it was a year ago. Of course, it's much easier to see a 30 or 40% increase when you're starting from the bottom of the barrel. Consumer sentiment has shifted dramatically in the past two to three weeks. There was optimism for travel and plans were beginning to sh take shape. However, with the rise in cases, we are now seeing more and more consumers saying they do not intend to travel this year. This weekly research from destination analysts has guided much of Discover Puerto Rico's decision making when it comes to planning our marketing, including messaging. And as we've seen time and again, beaches and rural destinations have topped the types of trips consumers are looking to take. Destination analysts tracks traveler sentiment quarterly for their reporting on the state of the American traveler. Beaches and water sports and visiting friends and family were the only two trip, trip drivers that increased as travel motivators since January. So given the importance of visiting friends and family, the diaspora market will become even more important to short-term recovery. Discover Puerto Rico recently surveyed consumers with an oversampling of diaspora to understand this important audience better. As would be expected, they're considerably more familiar with the island and view it more positively than other audiences. And given diaspora's interest in visiting the island in the coming year, they are Discover Puerto Rico's low-hanging fruit for marketing conversion. You'll also notice that familiarity, interest in visiting, and the island's perception are much more positive in the primary markets where Discover Puerto Rico has been able to focus its marketing in the past year. This research comes from a larger study that not only detailed the diaspora, but also evaluated Puerto Rico's competitive position, perception, as well as the reach of Discover Puerto Rico's advertising. With that, I'd like to introduce Andrea Hurston of Strategic Marketing and Research that conducted this work. Uh, Andrea is a longtime friend and colleague. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. So Smari Insights has conducted brand awareness research for Discover Puerto Rico since 2018. And overall, the purpose of this research has been to, to track travelers' interest in Puerto Rico as a leisure destination. We looked at this in a competitive context as well to see how Puerto Rico compares to other places travelers might be considering 
<clears throat> Many of the questions we asked in this wave of research were designed to track consumer views over time, such as familiarity, brand perceptions, and visit interest. And this wave of research added a measure of advertising awareness as well uh, and impact of the advertising on tracking measures. We conducted online surveys in May 2020. Yes, this is within the pandemic shutdown period. We've monitored results of numerous studies with travelers through the pandemic and the results point to little to no impact on people's ability to recall advertising or to report prior behaviors. There is impact, obviously, on future plans and visit intent. Uncertainty and pent-up demand for travel are both influencing consumer views toward travel. We screen travelers in the markets shown here to ensure they are of age, high-income households, leisure travelers, and travel decision makers for their households. And overall, data are presented at plus or minus 2% at the 95% confidence interval. So, Let's look at consumer views of Puerto Rico over time and for the primary markets in the context of the competitive set. Familiarity among primary markets is growing. Relative to the competitive set, familiarity is fairly similar from last year to this year. So Puerto Rico's growing familiarity positions it better within the competitive set. As marketing continues in these markets, we would expect familiarity to continue to grow. This is important because deciding to visit a destination is a process and the first step is learning enough about it to develop an interest in visiting. Thus, higher familiarity is a good step toward generating visitation. Visit intent has grown where Discover Puerto Rico invested marketing dollars, mainly in the primary markets and to a lesser extent in the secondary markets. Visit intent is consumers' likelihood to visit the destination in the coming year. We look at those who are already planning a trip and a share of those who are very and somewhat likely to visit. Here we see again that in the primary markets, intent to visit Puerto Rico reached 22%. Viewed in the context of other destinations, this level of visit intent puts Puerto Rico right near the center. Many of the other destinations have not seen increases in visit intent. Here, we're applying these visit intent shares to the household populations of the markets where we conducted the research. So, the 22% of primary markets with some level of visit intent or visit interest equates to 3.8 million possible Puerto Rico trips. Likewise, the 16% visit intent among secondary market travelers means over 900,000 possible trips. And a 14% visit intent nationally means 5.3 million trips. The size of the national market is really its appeal. If there were an opportunity to invest marketing here, even a small increase in visit intent would meet a large increase in possible trips. Totaling those trips, we see more than 10 million possible Puerto Rico visits in the coming year. And this is a 24% increase over the same measure we made in 2019. This is a positive result, particularly in light of the pandemic travel restrictions and points to a positive future as the situation improves. More consumers recognize Puerto Rico as a top tier leisure destination. And here we ask people, how would you rate Puerto Rico in terms of what it has to offer as a destination for a leisure trip? We see a nice lift in the primary markets where marketing is helping to inform people about what the island offers. But even in places where Discover Puerto Rico is not able to place paid media, there are conversations about Puerto Rico happening. Focusing on the primary markets and the competitive set where we just saw more consumers recognize Puerto Rico as a top tier leisure destination, Puerto Rico remains part of a second tier within the competitive set along with Costa Rica and Mexico. Hawaii, South Florida, and the Caribbean lead as they do in most measures. Next, we'll dig a little deeper into consumer views of Puerto Rico and its developed assets. As DPR implements its leisure travel marketing efforts, it's important to monitor perceptions of the island to ensure that the desired messaging is being communicated. 
There's higher agreement this year than last with all the personality descriptors in the primary markets where the bulk of ad spending was directed. These results are just what we anticipate seeing when a DMO marketing campaign is effective. Mari Insights conducts these, this type of research with leisure destinations throughout the country. Visit California, to Chicago, South Carolina, Texas, et cetera. Uh, and we've developed benchmarks based on this body of research. Our benchmarks suggest that a rating of 3.75 or higher is good and a rating of 4.0 or higher is excellent. With ratings of 4.0 or higher in almost every category, consumers are indicating that they strongly associate these descriptions with Puerto Rico. Here we're looking at the same results by visitor type rather than by geographic market. Interestingly, recent and likely visitors view Puerto Rico as positively as diaspora travelers do. We know that the diaspora is more favorable toward the island, so the fact that recent visitation and even visit interest can generate the same high ratings is a very positive result. Lower ratings among the potential audience underscore the opportunity for marketing to help inform consumers. Marketing efforts have helped position the island among LGBTQ travelers as an LGBTQ friendly destination. One of the image attributes we test is whether or not a destination is viewed as LGBTQ friendly. Last year, just under 20% agreed that it was. This year, after marketing was aimed at travelers who identify as LGBTQ, nearly half of this population is aware that Puerto Rico is LGBTQ friendly. I've mentioned a few times that the data point to positive impacts of the advertising. So in the next few slides, we'll look at the reach of the most recent campaigns. Overall, about a third of travelers and nearly two thirds of diaspora travelers recalled some element of Discover Puerto Rico's recent campaign. These results are specific to the Have We Met Yet brand campaign. Social had the highest reach of the three media, followed by TV. The low recall of individual media indicates that consumers were exposed to a low number of executions, so the reach of the campaign was broad, but not deep. We know that multiple overlapping exposures to destination messaging has greater impact than few exposures to a single ad, so this is an opportunity to grow reach and impact of the campaign as well. The campaign developed in response to January's earthquakes, Go, had similar awareness. Digital was particularly effective at reaching diaspora travelers, which could relate to targeting strategy. As with Have We Met Yet, awareness is higher in the primary markets, but not by much. This points to the messaging being relevant and breaking through among the other audiences. The last section of data we'll look at before wrapping up is the impact of the advertising. When we do the research, we ask behavioral and rating questions first before exposing respondents to the ads and asking if they've seen them. So we're able to go back and look at people's responses by whether or not they recalled the advertising. The data suggests that the ads are working. If we think of the responses of the unaware people as what the world would look like if Discover Puerto Rico did no advertising, we can compare that to the more positive responses of the consumers who are aware of the advertising. And the lift is due to the influence of the ads. Those who are aware of the advertising, the green bars, are much more likely to rate Puerto Rico as excellent or very good as a leisure destination. The advertising also helps increase perceptions of familiarity. This is important because familiarity is the first step in generating interest in traveling. Among the diaspora, both of these measures are already high, so the ads have less opportunity for incremental gains. The strong response among the national markets, which account for a much larger population than primary and secondary markets combined, supports an increased investment in these markets. With this type of impact among these travelers with just spillover from focused spending, the data suggests that a full campaign in the national markets could generate significant interest in and ultimately visitation to Puerto Rico. 
Discover Puerto Rico's advertising boosts agreement with all image attributes. The blue bars here again are the unaware responses. The green bars are those who are aware of the advertising and the, the orange line shows the benchmark rating for excellent. None of the unaware ratings reach that threshold, but nearly all of the ad aware ratings do. So in summary, Discover Puerto Rico's marketing efforts are improving consumer perception and generating interest in leisure trips to the island. Positive results are evident in all three market groups, but most positively in the primary markets where the bulk of advertising dollars were spent. However, with relatively little invested in a competitive marketplace, the data suggests that there are trips being left on the table. Increased investment would reach more travelers with DPR's message, particularly those who are unfamiliar with the island but interested in the experiences it has to offer. Continuing with marketing investment at the current level is likely to grow awareness and interest very slowly over time, and increased investment would do so much more quickly. Roughly a third of consumers recall Discover Puerto Rico's advertising. Awareness of the advertising resulted in a more positive image of the destination, higher familiarity with the island, and greater interest in visiting Puerto Rico. With the above positive impacts, expanding awareness and optimizing overlapping exposures to DPR messaging will reach a broader audience and generate visit interest among a larger population. Thank you, Andrea. While we don't know what the coming year holds for Discover Puerto Rico in terms of funding for future marketing, it is great to see the research that shows the impact the paid media is having on generating interest and improving the image of the island. I'd next like to introduce Vivian Murr, Adara's Senior Director of Leisure Markets. Adara is a key data partner for Discover Puerto Rico, providing tracking of our digital marketing efforts through their work, we're able to tie media placements to hotel and flight searches and bookings. And throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, Adara has been able to provide Discover Puerto Rico with up-to-date data on what's happening with all searches and bookings, not just those tied to advertising. So Vivian is here to share with us what they're seeing as Puerto Rico looks to reopen. Hello, I'm Vivian and it's great to be here. I've been working at Adara almost nine years now. My entire career has been in tourism, originally for Hilton Weston and Hyatt Hotels, and then in the DMO space as marketing director for the Hawaii Visitor and Convention Bureau. I worked in publishing and print media before getting into technology in 2007 with Travelocity. So I came to know a lot of Puerto Rico suppliers as a result, and I've been working in the region 21 years now. And right now it's more meaningful than it's ever been because together, if we pay attention, we can be smart about how we move forward. So who is Adara? The company is about 10 years old. Uh, we're the world's largest travel data technology platform. This means that we collect, organize, curate, and segment data and leverage this for business intelligence, analytics, and marketing strategy. The cornerstone of our business model is ethically sourced data. In a world of privacy and compliance challenges, we remain authentic and vigilant to ensure that we tap into valuable data that's in real time, is actionable, and helps us better understand consumer behavior. Why is it important that you know this? Uh, the scale of the data helps everyone to increase traveler value, not just to get more customers, but to capture the right ones. It provides our partners with a holistic view of today's traveler. And I emphasize today because we're all working in a very fluid and fast changing environment. So we're here to support you with resources and insights to drive recovery. Today, I'm going to be covering off on an overview of top line data captured specifically from our data partners. It is national, uh, regional, and also specific to Puerto Rico. 
So Adara is the world's travel data co-op. This is a sample of the data sources. We have over 270 partners globally. It spans airline, hotel, GDS, OTA, and meta search sources around the world. We've recently added Open Table and Live Nation discretionary spending to understand yield and economic impact. And just so you understand, when a consumer going to any of these websites of our partners for any reason at all, uh, our platform is capturing the behavior and it's our job to make sense of it for you. The newest editions of restaurant spending with Open Table and Live Nation who owns Ticketmaster helps us to develop a consumer profile and identity spending graph. This is a snapshot of the type of data. We've developed an identity graph based on travel behavior, mapping back identities to households, tablets, computers, laptops, and smartphones. So we see when consumers shop, book, their travel dates, their class of service, et cetera. It is a combination of art and science to really understand the implications for a destination and put this to use strategically. So the big question, are consumers still shopping for travel? With that, let's dig in. Where are they coming from and how have they changed in the face of COVID-19? This graph color-coded, it's a year-over-year -year comparison since February of this year for demand of travel. The volume of search activity, which, which represents intent to travel. If someone is shopping to go somewhere and they're researching airfare and hotel pricing, they demonstrate for us intent and consideration. Typically, when someone says, we have to get away, we need a vacation, they begin with shopping for airfare prices. You know, I wonder what the fares are like to, and then generally hotel accommodation, accommodations come after that. Puerto Rico was pacing ahead of regional and national trends through March of 2020. You can see a dramatic dip, obviously based on world events. And this is the kind of data that's often used to report on economic impact for funding. Uh, we currently provide the U.S. Travel Association with perspective, uh, and it's refreshed daily. As far as the Caribbean region goes and search intent, this outline shows you what's ahead with a 20-week outlook specific to the Caribbean region, along with the percentage of drop year over year. What we're looking for here is a stabilization of this demand and a leveling off followed by upward trend lines, which would be the first indicators of a more sustainable tourism pace for the region. Taking a look back of search intent, this is a view of the dramatic effects of the pandemic week over week and how it impacted search activity. Marketers and suppliers here again are watching for a sustained trend upward. You can see when the economy was still strong in March, there was a very healthy spike in consideration for travel to the Caribbean and a noticeable pickup that started around Memorial Day as islands started to announce their reopening plans. So here's a look at data for hotel purchases to Puerto Rico. Looking specifically at Puerto Rico, the last three months and the past 12 months as a comparison. Over the past 12 months running, Adara saw 5.5 million consumers shopping for travel to Puerto Rico, which is very impressive. We measured almost 50,000 direct bookings with an average of 3.3 days. In the last three months, April through June, conversely, we measured almost 600,000 consumers considering travel to Puerto Rico and tracked almost 5,000 bookings with a slightly longer length of stay and an advanced purchase window of 68.7 days. Naturally, the longer booking window is a reflection of the airline's resuming lift, better certainty around safety to travel, as well as pent-up demand 
and it is a respectable, respectable volume comparatively. This is an outline of the look to book advanced purchase patterns to Puerto Rico. Also specific, this outlines where there have been shifts in shopping and booking. What are the purchase windows? How have they changed? This is important since it's very dynamic and it is always shifting. The goal here is to stay apprised, to stay competitive and aware of short, mid and long-term travel trends. Of the bookings we saw to Puerto Rico in June, just last month, the ADR was a respectable 253.45. And in the past 90 days, so Q2, uh, this is a DARA data. It is not specific to website or marketing exposure, but it represents the source markets to Puerto Rico as well as the competitive landscape. There are likely not too many surprises here as far as source markets go, but we keep an eye out for any new sound bites and also yield by market. This also looks at behavior among those searching for Puerto Rico within 72 hours in the same session. Where else have these consumers considered going? It helps us to better understand the competitive landscape, which is also con changing continuously based on world conditions. For those that have visited the Discover Puerto Rico uh, website, this talks a little bit about site engagement. Over the past six months, remarkably, even while people were quarantined, there was dreaming and engagement about travel to Puerto Rico. Consumers that visited the Discover Puerto Rico website triggered almost a million searches for travel. Those that actually booked had an average daily rate of 262. 92 and generated over the last six months a minimum of 17,000 room nights. These are the direct bookings exclusive of tour operators and OTAs. What we typically see here is consumers that have engaged with a destination site tend to book further in advance, have a higher ADR and a longer length of stay. And what I think is really most remarkable here is that in the past three months, with everything going on in the world, there was a steady increase of consumers visiting the website, dreaming, shopping, exploring. That's a very positive indicator as most destinations struggled to maintain visitation with reduced or eliminated spending. So in summary, Puerto Rico, I, I feel, and our data shows has done a really solid job in, in keeping share of mind during a very turbulent time. There is still booking and shopping activity that's going on. People who are willing to travel offshore to warm weather destinations, marketing never really goes to sleep, even if it changes or pauses, uh, keeping pulse of changing dynamics and tourism patterns will lead re to recovery, as well as being nimble and agile. That will also win, win in the recovery as you emerge. And that's, that's my overview for today. Thank you everyone for such great information and insight. Um, we have a few questions that have come up on our Q&A box. But uh, before we get started, I want to let you know that we will not be able to offer the translation feature during the Q&A session. However, later this week, we will send a link to the recording of this webinar so that you can replay it at your convenience. Alicia Valentine's email, it's on the screen. So if you have questions or need any additional information, please feel free to reach out to her via email. A nuestros amigos que están utilizando nuestro servicio de traducción, no vamos a poder ofrecer la función de subtítulos en esta sección. Sin embargo, les haremos llegar todas las preguntas y respuestas en inglés y español junto a la grabación de este seminario web más tarde esta semana. Además de esto, el correo electrónico de Alicia Valentine está en pantalla. Pueden anotarlo y si tienen dudas, preguntas o necesitan alguna información adicional, pueden comunicarse con ella a través del mismo. 
Now let's get started. Uh, Alicia, I think uh, this is a question that you can help us uh, respond. With the rising COVID cases in the US, how is Discover Puerto Rico choosing where to market? Sure, so lots of talk lately about rising cases in Florida, Arizona, Texas. Uh, certainly those Florida and Texas markets are uh, where we had considered those primary markets that uh, strategic marketing and research was talking about. Um, and so we're taking a look at what's happening with cases and flight data on a weekly basis and reviewing that with our um, agency, Miles Partnership, and r, &R Partners as we're looking to uh, be back in the marketplace. And certainly, whenever we were initially making uh, plans and having conversations about where to market, um, it was a very different situation with New York. And so uh, New York was not part of those initial plans, but now with things um, easing there, and certainly given the flight availability out of New York, they've now um, become part of that plan again, and we're pulling back as we're seeing those increasing cases in Florida. However, the flight availability out of um, the Orlando market is really hard to ignore. Uh, it is the market with the, the most flights to the island um, through the rest of 2020. But Miles has generated um, kind of a matrix that takes into account the number of seats available from each market, the number of cases, from each market, um, as well as cases per thousand in, um, in each of those. So um, taking a look at that on a regular basis and being a, able to evaluate how we're shifting resources based off of what's happening, um, both in flights and in terms of COVID cases. Um, Alicia, you just mentioned the air capacity and uh, we have a question here. Uh, what are you seeing in terms of air capacity? How are the airlines adjusting schedules for anticipated demand? Certainly, there's a, a lot of information coming at them and they've been making those um, updates on a regular basis and it's been so interesting in how we anticipate and apparently they're anticipating um, similar kinds of activity in that throughout um, the rest of the year, flight uh, availability compared to 2019 is actually about 6% higher. But that's all coming in that September through December time frame. For um, July and August, we've seen about a 28% reduction in uh, seat capacity from the previous year, but um, about an 8% increase in September through December. So um, again, those airlines really having a pulse on um, what consumer activity is happening, both in terms of searches and bookings, looking at the same kind of data that Discover Puerto Rico is looking at in terms of forecasting, um, and really anticipating strong demand September through December. Thank you. Um, we have a question here regarding the, uh, the 72 hour um, negative results for uh, COVID in order to enter the island. Our chief marketing officer, Leah Chandler, is joining us today. And uh, Leah, if you can help us answer this question, uh, the question is um, that some of the people coming, their tests are taking a little longer than the 72 hours that we require. So people are seeing a lot of cancellations due to this. Uh, is there uh, any possible changes to this? Do you have any more information about it? Sure. So um, we obviously know that that is a, a challenge. Um, a, a lot of states uh, and, and state testing sites are not willing to guarantee anything um, shorter than four days in terms of turning those test results around. I think it's important to note, however, here that um, this process is not Discover Puerto Rico's process, that, that this is uh, a mandate coming from the governor's office and the Department of Health, and we are only helping to message this and communicate uh, to our consumers on the mainland so that they can best prepare, they can try to meet those requirements, and of course, if they're not able to meet those requirements, there still is testing opportunity when they arrive on the island. Um, so all of that information is available today via our travel advisory on discoverpuertorico.com. Um, 
and you know there as far as will this change um, again it's it's not our process we're we're merely helping to to message that and communicate to it um, but certainly uh, there there's always potential that, that things are going to continue to evolve as as further executive orders come out um, I'll note here though that when we look across the board at what's happening in the Caribbean our uh, new arrival protocols are not dissimilar to what most other Caribbean destinations and even Hawaii are coming out with in um, the recent weeks and will be coming out with in the coming weeks as we, we talk to some of those competitors regarding the 72 hour requirements um, for, for COVID testing. So the majority are requiring that if you look at, at Bahamas, if you look at um, Bermuda, if you look like I said at Hawaii, um, Aruba, they're also requiring um, that same testing window. In fact, in, in some islands, even uh, like Bermuda, they're not only requiring the 72 hour uh, test with the, the negative results when you arrive, but then you have to test again when you get to the island and that's a second requirement. So um, I think we're, we're definitely playing it safe. It's certainly for um, the health and safety of not just the visitors, but also our, our residents. And we're going, going to con continue to message that the best we can to prepare visitors for what their experience is gonna be like when they get to the island. Thank you, Leah. Sure. Uh, Andrea, I'm sorry. Uh, Andrea, this question's mm -hmm. for you. Um, mm -hmm. We are. Uh, we talked about advertising awareness uh, um, earlier on the webinar. Can you share a little bit on how uh, Discover Puerto Rico's advertising compares to other destinations? Sure. So again, in terms of the strength of the messaging. Um, we, I showed you the, the, the ratings um, compared to our benchmarks. It compares very well. The, the creative itself um, is quite strong. In terms of its reach, um, to reach a third of the households in your, in your target markets with a limited budget is, um, is a very good performance. We see a range and it, it depends very much on how advertising is targeted, how much is spent, how long um, an advertiser has continued to direct advertising in a particular um, target audience or a particular market. California, for instance, spends a great deal. They have a national campaign. Um, they reach upwards of 70%. Um, this Orlando used to ha has, has also um, very high reach. There's a cost to it, um, but again, if you're if you're building to to get to a third, um, it, it's a it's a step in the right direction. It's a strong start. Thank you. Uh, we mm -hmm. also uh, talked about diaspora earlier, and we have a question on that. Uh, is there any mm -hmm. data available about uh, demographic info, age, education level, the markets that they're in? Uh, is there anything you can share about that? Sure. So diaspora um, tends to be, it skews somewhat younger compared to the general population traveler. We were looking at high income households already. So um, that same screening criteria was used for diaspora and general population. They, they skew somewhat younger, somewhat more likely to have kids in the household, but for the most part, the remaining demographic categories, um, education, gender, are very much the same as general population travelers. In terms of where we found them, um, we have we were able to find them throughout all of the markets. There are some some higher um, incidence areas that you would expect. So, um, Florida, New York, Texas, um, somewhat higher incidence of diaspora in those populations. Zio, you're on mute. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Leah, we have uh, one more question, and this is again uh, related to um, airport arrivals and the 14-day uh, period quarantine. Uh, what will happen to people that have to leave the island before the 14-day quarantine is over? So um, I, I believe, and I know it's very complicated because there are, are sort of a lot of nuances to this, and I think some of these areas are, are still being fleshed out a little bit. Um, but I'll, I'll try my best to explain. If someone arrives to the island and does not have the negative test results in hand, they are going to be required to do the quick COVID test at the airport. Um, and then they are released to go to their lodging property if that is negative. 
um, when they get to the lodging property, they're going to have to quarantine there until the time with which they are able to acquire a negative molecular test result from a clinic that is on the island. So then they would have to quarantine again. Um, it may be anywhere between eight to 10 hours uh, where they will have to quarantine in their hotel until they're able to get that negative uh, molecular code. If they're not able to at any of these points that molecular test, then they are required to um, quarantine in their hotel for 14 days or the length of their visit. So uh, that I think that's the way the executive order reads right now. CO, uh, correct me if, if I've misspoken there, um, because as I as I mentioned, it, it does kind of continue to evolve, and and we've been getting some really great questions. Um, some of you may have noticed that we posted yesterday for the first time in all of our social channels um, about these COVID testing requirements. A lot of questions are coming in from consumers that are really good questions and, and questions that um, weren't all necessarily addressed in the executive order. So we're continuing to, to try to update that information as we get inquiries from consumers. But CEO, anything to add there? No, I think you have that um, correct. And uh, if you have um, any type of a future traveler or whatnot that is asking for this type of information, we have um, our travel advisory on the website. I suggest you uh, direct them there to discoverpuertorico.com and we have all the information there as well as um, our direct link to the um, airport's new website, SJU uh, Insider, which can also give you additional information for that. Well, thank you very much ladies for, uh, for the information that you shared today. Thank you to the industry for joining us on the webinar. This is all we have for today, but uh, don't forget to join us for our next industry update on August 5th, and we'll see you on the next one.